Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. We are uh, approaching a 2011 Subaru, I think it's a Forester. Uh, the customer states there's an oil leak and unfortunately they had just recently had an oil leak repaired. I think the uh, one of the dealerships uh, did a uh, like a valve cover job on this thing and she complains of a uh, leaking on the driveway and a stinky, smelly, uh, oil burning type of uh, scent coming out of this unit at 89,587 miles on the odometer. So we're going to bring this thing in real quick. I'm going to rack it up in the middle stall over there. We're going to take a look down below, see if we in fact do have an oil leaking situation. And uh, then uh, we're going to make a move to remedy said situation. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Go ahead and uh, shut this thing down, firing off. We're gonna get under the bonnet down below. Where's my hood release? Popping the hood. And let's uh, see if we can't track down the source of this petroleum drippage. All right, Subi. What do we have to work with in here? This is a flat four engine, four cylinder, two cylinders here, two cylinders here. They are, uh, they're opposing each other. They call this a boxer configuration. I believe Porsche does the same thing with, with the 911 let's see there's some oil i see a little bit there's some oil around the filter but that's nothing really crazy yeah, a bunch of it over here like i said they uh, recently had valve covers replaced and sort of based on the condition of that piece of sealant right there i can concur with such things somebody did have the valve covers off of this engine at some point but it is a leaking leaker nothing back here let's go ahead and set the rack up we'll get it up in the air and then take a look down below because uh, if there is an oil leak it's gonna be dripping down uh, not up and we're looking from the upside we want to see it from the downside alrighty black subscribe button Subaru moving on up the rack is set both sides let's get, uh, let's get this thing up in the air and see what uh, where this drippage is actually coming from here All right, up at the top here, set her down on the locks for some uh, safety, clickage, and let's see what we've got to, uh, to work with here. Got it. There's a leak right there. Got a little bit of oil right there dripping off the bottom of that cylinder head. That's it right there. All right, there's a leak, and that's got a free path to fall down and drip. So nothing at the valve cover. This looks like it is timing cover leakages. That's not cool. Hmm, all right. And how about this other side? What do we see, anything good? Anything leaking? Yeah, yeah, there's a leak here at this side as well. I just saw there's a bunch of oil right there on the exhaust. See it right, right in here, right there leaking. And it is dripping from, try to get the right angle for our viewing dangle here. You see it way up front, just above that little green wire, there's another drip. Uh, that is also valve cover leakages, or I'm sorry, timing cover leakages. So that's our, that's our issue here. This engine's timing cover is leaking. Ew, not fun. Not really fun at all. All right, well, let me go let them know what, uh, what the issue is here we're gonna see what we're gonna do be right back don't go anywhere all right folks looks like we're doing a timing cover reseal on our subaru today so uh it's kind of a big job it's uh i think it booked times for like seven hours or something like that so let's get this thing down on the ground to a manageable working height and i'm gonna go ahead and start tearing into it we're gonna start from the top side we're gonna pull everything apart as much as possible and then uh we'll see how this goes i uh i think the Part that's the most fun is going to be the crank bolts. I understand these are uh, a little tough to get out of there, but we'll see how it works. So I need to get some light on the subject here. We're going to pull off these plastics, pull the accessory drive off. We'll get down to it and uh, we'll get this cover off at least by the end of this video. So let's get after it. Rule number one with hood struts. Never trust your hood strut. These things like to, uh, to get weak and leak down. 
and before you know it a gust of wind is going to come by and it'll blow the hood down on top of you so we're going to install a uh, an extendable prop rod right here and this guy is going to keep me from smashing my noggin on the hood of the subaru safety okay so we've got this piece of plastic trim here i'm going to get under it with some trim tools and pull out these little push button plastic retainers right here little two-piece guys i'm going to get under those pop them out trim tools work better than screwdrivers for such applications get rid of this guy here which is also sliding into the air box okay plastic here on the top of the engine that's a shroud for the belt system let's pop this thing off looks like it's one bolt and a rubber grommet with a little peg that goes into it so i'm reaching down the bottom of this radiator and i've got this uh got a phillips bit on the end of a uh, little mini ratchet because there's a drain valve at the bottom of this radiator and it's a uh, it's not a normal type of drain valve where uh it's got like the butterfly on the end of it. This one has to have some kind of a tool to remove it. It's a, it's almost like a, like a big Phillips bit down there. Just a, you know, a plus shape. That's what I'm saying. So let me get this drain valve backed out. We're going to start draining coolant out of it and then uh, we'll pull the hoses off and whatnot. So I think I've got to pull the water pump out of this and I know this hose has to go away. Uh, I'm going to pull the radiator out of it just for some more clearance. So can't do any of that with coolant in there so as soon as I get this thing draining we'll uh, we'll start working on the hoses up top hose plant flyers for the wind they got a little notch in the uh, end of them designed specifically to grab onto these types of clamps prevents the slippages walk this guy off no up top spillage Pop it off the top here. Set this thing aside. Good. Okay, so here up top, let's get after this tensioner, the belt, pull the belt off, get this guy out of the way. Come on, belt, let go. It's on the compressor, no, uh, power steering, power steering pump. No, what is that? That's Oh, that's water pump down there. Ooh, it's a Subaru, I forgot. Water pumps are at the bottom. Okay, next I would like to get the coolant reservoir out of here. So this thing is tabbed in and it's held in with some pegs. So I've got to depress the tab, slide her away, and then it should come up and out. Here, let's try real hard to get this hose loose without breaking the plastic nipple on the radiator. Success. Now this guy wiggles right out, one more peg and one more grommet, hangs on to it, we'll set this aside. Okay, next I want these fans out of here because the radiator is coming out. So we're going to just unbolt these guys. I might be able to just pull everything out at one time, but I'm just going to take the fans off. It's probably easier. Put that right there. I uh, disconnected, I thought I disconnected it. Oh, there's like a power steering line on it or whatever. Hang on, let me unclip that guy. Come on, line. It's on there, good. There's little, uh, little clip things at the bottoms of these. I'll show it to you when I get it out. It's hanging on to this uh, coolant hose or whatever this is. Maybe, tell you what, we'll get this other one out. I'll reach around from the side. Gravity. Like I lost one. Okay, one fan. Let's get that other one dug out of there. Reach in here and pull that line off. There we go. Yeah, see right there, that little groove or whatever. There was two rubber lines placed into that groove. And we'll fetch that fastener. <laughs> so let's give the, uh, the half inch 90 degree Milwaukee a shot at this uh, crank bolt real quick. It might come out, it might not. 
That's nice. Good, 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 super good. Pull that guy out of there. Set you over here. So I believe that Subaru crank pulleys are keyed and not pressed. And that is correct. They're keyed on, not pressed. Actually, not even key weight on. It's just got a little pin right here. A little dowel pin that locks it in. How about that? Okay, let's start peeling away the layers. We'll lose the uh, idler pulleys first. Huh, note to sell. Subaru has metal pulleys, not plastic pulleys. That might be good when searching for replacements one day. So as for this tensioner pulley, there's a bolt that holds it on and another one here, I think. I believe I've got to pull off the uh, pulley pulley, or the tensioner pulley first to get access to that bolt back there. Thought that might have been reverse thread and I thought wrong. Okay, going in for those tensioner bracket bolts. I think that's what these are, I think. I'm no Subaru master technician. And those are not what I thought they were. Okay. Yeah, there's usually like a bolt right here in the middle that bolts these tensioners on. Actually, you know what? Maybe maybe there is. Hang on. I, that's, a, that's a piece of rubber. Let me see something real quick. It might be a plug for a fastener. And it very well could be. I see a fastener back there. Okay. How about an H8? That's what it looks like to me. Fit that guy on. Unclick. Okay, it turned. I fear putting torque on this because these Subarus are like made out of cheese. I've learned my lesson with fasteners on Subaru engines. But I'm also, I'm working on one again, so did I really learn my lesson or? Or not? Probably not. Anyway, there's our tensioner. Cool, we're getting somewhere. So, looking left, let's start pulling some wires off of this cover. I'm gonna try real hard to not break any of the plastic stuff that secures these wires. No guarantees, but I'm gonna try. Let's get under that sensor clip. Pop that guy off. This one. Can't even put my hand on it. It's weird. go then there's another little clip right here kind of holding that harness on bear with me let's walk this guy out yeah I, I really like to put these things back so if I can avoid breaking it that's kind of like how I just broke it that's the the best uh, best possible scenario I hate finding things that have been worked on and all of the harnesses are no longer attached to anything. They're just kind of flopping around. It's a, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I mean, I get it, they break, but you gotta at least try to not break it. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. It's like Almond Joy. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. And I am an Almond Joy. Not really, I, that made no sense whatsoever, at all. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Long connector. Go. More zip tie clips just below that. Lock that one off, good another connector right back over here I don't even think you guys can see push that guy off there we go. got it cool let's see 
right here we've got some electronical action going on what is that a low pressure sender maybe that not that the wires are in the way okay we need to unscrew that little sender right there yeah that's just gonna be not a Phillips screwdriver because it's hitting the radiator okay so it'll be a seven millimeter socket instead So this little fastener here, I'm just going to put that back in the sending unit because that's tiny to keep track of and ding, and also hard to replace if I lose it. Ding again, double dings, that was, that was my ratchet. That was my zero drive ratchet banging on stuff. Yeah, broke that one. I heard the snap. Snap, crack, and pop. Okay. So next, I think I need to pull the dipstick tube out because it probably extends down into the pan. So let's dig this thing out of here. Give it some wiggle action. There she is, dip and stick removed. And I'll put the bolt back so it does not get lost. Let's move down a little deeper into this unit here, we need to get the water pump pulley removed right here because there's some fasteners behind it for the cover and with that pulley in place or in the way there, we will not be able to uh, access said fasteners. We're gonna do some uh, neutral drops with the electron ratchet. Watch this. Yeah, nope. doesn't want to come off. That's fine. Well, since the quarter inch wouldn't do it, we'll just do it with a half inch because I got 10 mil sockets and a half inch too. Yeah, you lose a little bolt. metallic ringling noise okay there's our pulley water pump stays in position all right I think I am now at a point where I can go after uh, all these timing cover bolts so I see a series of 13s here there's a couple tens scattered about Let's start pulling these apart and see what happens not with this gun no there, perhaps I can just uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll crack them loose and take them off. Okay, so I just realized I was busy taking pictures and not video. So I got half these timing cover bolts off on that side. I'm going around and pulling the flashlight. Dang, that one went down hard. So I'm going around uh, pulling these perimeter bolts out. Put my light back. Wow, there's one of my, my units there. Another one up top. There's, there's many of these things. I guess it's not all bad that I was just taking pictures probably saved us like 15 minutes of, of bolt screwing. Now we did find uh, two different length bolts in there. There's short ones and four inch longer ones. We're on one of the longer ones as we speak right now. Yeah, see these big boys are hanging out on the side. Another one down below right there on the edge the corner, the edge of the corner. Something 
smells weird in here. Smells like the inside of a Subaru engine. Must have let some Subaru air out. That one loose. That's a shorty. Okay. Yeah, let me feel around here and see if I'm missing anything. Yeah, there's, I got one. Looks like there's one or two right here. One right there. Let's get that one pulled out. That's one of the longer ones that I removed earlier. And this one right up here. Now there is a gasket set for this, which I, I still am waiting on. It was in a faraway land and I think they're UPSing it over. So it's not here yet. But I still have plenty of bolts to remove as well, so I think we have time. Another one straight down. Another shorty. Let's see. Yeah, these bolts are everywhere on this unit. Yeah, it is a good thing I was just taking pictures and not recording. Guy. I see another one right here behind the oil filter. Oop. Oh, it landed on the little tray. Oh, good for me. Hey, new game. Count how many of these bolts that I didn't drop when I tried to take them out. So I think I've dropped more bolts than, uh, than I have managed to successfully capture. And I'm not even holding the camera either, so there. There's one. Feeling around. Feel another one right here, another 13. Now there are some tens going through this cover in a couple places. I don't know if they pass all the way through or what the deal is with those. So we will uh, we'll cross that bridge when I, when I come to it. Okay, another one over here on the left, my left. It's just farther away from you guys' point of view. Okay. I think we're close to uh, having all of those fasteners removed, I think. So here, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go around and we're gonna take a look around the perimeter here. That one's removed. That one below, that one. I think I took out two extras for no reason, but that's fine. They were probably bolting the bracket on. There's one, there's one, there's one. We've got that one, the two on the side, this one right in front of us, and then down below. I have an idea. We got them all on the top side. Let's run this thing up and take a look at the bottom side and see if we missed any. It's probably easier to do that looking up than trying to look down and around. So we return to our black subscribe button. We're all moving up. Okay. Back at the top. On the lock. Let's see what we can see. Up oh, there we go. Missed one right there. And above that, we have all those. Missed one right there. And then right over here behind this wire harness bit of business, there's a couple more missing. So I need to pull this little shield off so I can reach those little connectors. We got one, two, at least three or four more of these guys to go. We can see you. What you doing? You leaving? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, there's a bracket up there for uh, all these connectors. We'll take that off. And then, drop that in there. Hmm, what else are we stuck on? More bracketry? Yeah, see the other bolts. 
Going back in one more time. No, we're not doing that. So, I guess I have no choice but to just disconnect these guys. Look at that, thing just broke. Touch it and it breaks off. That was junk. I think I know how to avoid getting frustrated with this. Wobbly sockets. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So that whole little bit of business comes free. Good. There, I put the light on top of the mufflers. Maybe that'll, uh, or the catalytic converters. Maybe that'll work. So there's uh, one of our ones on the bottom. That guy. A couple more in this uh, similar location here. There's one right up there. Let's get that guy out. And then off to the left, there's another one hiding out. A little sneaky guy back there. Okay, we are, we're close. I think that is all with the exception of that last one right up there. See right there? One more, we'll move on. Okay, okay, so we got all the fasteners out of there. The next challenge, I think, is gonna be getting this RTV sealant that is gluing this cover to the, uh, the front of the case here separated. And I think I'm gonna try to get after it right here at a, with a pry bar. That seems to be a reasonable spot. Yeah, what I've gotta do is get behind it and apply some kind of leverage against the cover to crack the seal. I'm wondering, see how this, that fits in that groove right there quite nicely. I'm wondering if I put like a wrench on this pry bar and I twist it, that'll be enough to, uh, to start to separate these things. Yeah, that might do it. Let me try that. So let's see, we'll stick that in the groove. Got a wrench on it. we we'll give it a twist. It didn't work. Wrench slipped. Nope, the aluminum yielded before uh, before the glue did. I see the thing flexing. Yeah, that's not it. Not the right spot, okay. Okay, well, down here does not seem to be the right place to try to crack this cover loose, so let's let the whole unit down again and we'll try to get after it from the top side. Back up, black subscribe button, lock release. Rubisu coming down. Yeah, the top side's gotta have something to pry off of. So we'll try from there. Back at the top, I found another groove right here. We can try to pry against that one to break this loose. So let's get a let's get the pry bar in there and see if this doesn't crack the uh, that bond with the RTV sealer right here. Let's try this one with a pry driver, not so much a pry bar. Fit into that groove right there. Kind of just give it a push and see if it's going to break free or not. You flex these too far and they're going to they break off. bit of pressure yeah that, the cover is flexing a lot it's not wanting to come free keep working it some see what happens yeah it's it's moving but I just don't think all that 
RTV is let go yet. I can see the whole top of the cover moving around. Yeah, we're close. I don't know how close I am, but I know I'm close. I don't see any other bolts on this thing. Here, let's, uh, let's try it from a different bit of an angle here. I'll try to pry at it from the top. I I'm going to pry off of this mount right here, and I shouldn't. But I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, see, it's it's moving. It's actually moving quite a bit. Yeah, hey, hey, I heard some... Uh, I heard that sealant let go. Ooh, ooh, we're getting somewhere. It's moving now, guys. And I'm just trying to not crack the cover because I know it can be done. But that's things, uh, it's moving. Getting there with some curvy pry bar, maybe a shorter one. Pry it against right here. Yep, see it moving. So close. Okay, got that bolt. Yeah, they're all out. I think they're all out, pretty sure. So I got her moving, at least. This half is moving. I got half of it moving. So, ding, covers coming off. Let's change the angle of the curvy pry bar. Yeah. Okay, I'm pulling up on this one. Pretty close. We're pretty close. I've got a gap pried into it right over here, so that's gapped out. Let's try to find what other bolts hanging on to it up here. Anything else? No. Let me pry against this corner over here next and crack the top side loose. Okay, let's try this little slot right here. Let's pry on that little guy. Let's see if we can't get this thing down. Yeah, see, we're moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't fall. Okay, what I'll do, I'm going to open that up a little bit and then take this pry bar, get that down in there a little deeper, give it a push. Yeah. It's coming off. It's going. She's going, guys. She's going. A little bit at a time. So I'm going to leave that guy wedged in right there to kind of hang on to it and we're gonna go around and see where it is not releasing so that's gonna tell me if we've got more bolt somewhere we have not found yet I don't think so let's get back on this side and pry at it again see that one's coming out so up top it seems to be fully released It's almost like it's hanging on near the near the crank. It shouldn't be. You see that whole thing's flexing, it's moving around. Okay. So since we know that the whole top side of this cover is loose and it's not wanting to go anywhere, let's raise her back up again and kind of try to pry off it from the bottom side one more time. Back up to the top, moving on off Rubisu. Hey look, we're getting somewhere. Dumping oil out. Yeah, so now we're dumping oil. So I'm, I'm assuming we cracked the seal on this thing. It wasn't doing that before they brought it to me. Oh yeah, yeah, oil leaking out. Where's that coming from? Bottom of the cover? Yeah, right here. Yeah, it, it's coming loose. I think I just got to keep working it. Yeah, look, it's loose at the bottom. There's a big gap, little gap forming right here more gap it's just not letting go I, it feels like there's a fastener hanging on to it but I just don't see one maybe it's just the crank seal holding on let's try this we'll get behind it right here at the bottom 
pry it out some. It's yeah, yeah, she's moving, it's spilling more oil now. A little bit of pry there. Yeah, looking left. Yeah, she's dumping oil everywhere. I did not know I had to drain the uh, engine oil out of this. Oh, now I know. It's gotta be the crank seal hanging on to this or something. This is, oh, I got it. Hey, we got it. Yeah, that's the sound. And it is the crank seal hanging on to it. Or whatever that is up there. Something's, something's holding me up. But okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna let this back down. I'll, I'll dig this thing out from the top side. There we go. Man, it's bright staring into those lights up there. Back it up. Okay, back up top again. What is this? A little thing sticking out. Oh, the keyway off the crank. Okay, that comes out. I thought that was actually part of the crank snout. The Subaru people that are watching this are like, yeah, we tried to tell you, dude. We tried to tell you. There she is. There's our cover, most of it. Come on out, come on out. Oh yeah. Okay, let's examine what all is going on down under this cover here. We clearly have a timing chain system, dual overhead cams, or intake and exhaust cam on each side. Both cams are running off of the itty bitty little baby crankshaft right there. Look at that cute little guy. His tensioners look good. Or guide, guide, chain guides rather. Those look good. Tensioners are fine. Because the chains are not slack. Same thing on this other side. Two cams. Uh, one is VVT, one is not. What a simple little engine. Now the part that's not okay is all this uh, sealant everywhere. Look at all that on there. I had to go around this entire perimeter and scrape all this sealant off. Uh, it looks like they've got an O-ring to change right there. There's probably, yep, there's another O-ring right there. That's gotta get changed out. That one down there. And I'm sure there's another, yep, there it is right there, another O-ring. So I need to get to scraping, get to washing these off. Look at all that right there. Look at RTV all over that business. What is that? Is that a broken off bolt? It better not be, I didn't break one. Okay, well. Okay, well, now I need to get to uh, to cleaning. That's what's uh, next on the list here. Clean it up, prep it, waiting on my gaskets to show up, and we'll go from there. All righty, folks, so I got a bit of scraping to do here on the timing cover. There's all kinds of sealant caked into all these nooks and crannies. Gotta clean all this stuff off, get this thing out of here so we can apply new sealant. Uh, waiting on those four. I don't even know how that happened. Waiting on, uh, oh, it's an empty tank. That's why I must have, must have walked past it funny. But uh, anyway, I'm waiting on those four gaskets to arrive. They were supposed to be coming from Sarasota yesterday, but they're not here yet. Uh, I called the parts people. They said they're in transit, whatever that means. Uh, regardless, I've got the perimeter of, uh, of this timing cover on the engine block and then the cylinder heads cleaned off and scraped out drained out the rest of the engine oil and i've given this like a preliminary wipe down i'm not going to pick the gaskets out of their respective positions just yet not till my new ones arrive however it's becoming late in the day and i grow weary of this rubisu so having said that i'm going to walk away from this since i'm at a really good stopping point and since I'm walking away from this, then uh, I'm going to have nothing more to offer you on this particular video. So this is going to end up being a part two uh, on this uh, particular Forester. Uh, when I get uh, when I get my gaskets and everything, I should have all this stuff cleaned up at that point, and we can then move on to the reassembly phase. So we're gonna have to save that one for the part two. This is now officially the part one video. So having said all that, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this uh, timing chain cover design in the comment section down below. Do not forget to engage that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a Subaru, in a leaking timing cover, in a reseal job, and of transmission.